In this video, we're going to talk about DirectX versus Vulkan, the technology that allows your video game to talk to your PC hardware. Make sure you subscribe, leave a comment, and like this video for more. But what is DirectX and Vulkan? They are what's known as an API. An API allows for a game developer to write their game and the API talks to the video card, CPU, GPU, sending the graphics from the game to your sound card so you can hear it or GPU so you can see it. DCS uses DirectX 11. Vulkan was released in 2016. It's newer and OS agnostic, which means that Vulkan can run on other operating systems, whereas DirectX is tied to Windows. DirectX has been around for a while and DirectX 11 is quite old, coming out in 2009. And what it will do is it'll act as that interface between DCS World and your hardware. The current version is DirectX 12, but what we'll be doing is we'll be pretending to be Eagle Dynamics and they are going to release a Vulkan version of DCS World in the future. But what we'll do is we'll use DXVK to intercept that code from direct from DCS World, instead of going to DirectX, it'll go through the Vulkan API, giving us a performance estimate of how much better Vulkan is. Now, the important thing that we're looking at here is what's our FPS, because that's what we really care about as gamers. And of course, because we're not using a natively designed program, which was built for Vulkan, but rather we're intercepting and redirecting that code, there is a 5% hit. So keep that in mind as we look at this. Here's our graphic settings in DCS World. Now everything is at 4K, fairly high settings. And on the left side will be DirectX 11. On the right side will be the Vulkan DXVK intercepted code. Now, the current and the best way to compare Vulkan is to DirectX 12, which came out in 2015 and Vulkan came out in 2016. So those are the newer engines that pass the code of the game to your graphics card. They're more efficient and more aware of newer hardware. Just by that point alone, Vulkan will perform in theory better than the original DirectX 11. Now, even if we assume a 5% hit, what I want you to do is I want you to look at the GPU bound, CPU bound green and red on the FPS counter. What I've noticed, and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, is it seems that the DirectX implementation, even though it's native and it's not using the translation engine, it's getting more of the CPU bound errors as the airplane flies. You can also watch the CPU behavior on the bottom right side using my 13600K processor and the 4090 video card. It appears to me that Vulkan is not as performative at the higher end, but also it's way more stable. Now this was done as a 2D 4K test on the torture map, the link to which is in the description. But on the left side that DirectX is flipping in and out. I've seen reports for folks who did use this DXVK engine to send the DirectX 11 code or eight or nine code to Vulkan of impressive CPU stability and performance. And I think we're seeing it here. Looks like natively DirectX 11 is not quite as efficient as Vulkan at talking to the CPU. So we're getting a lot more of those CPU bound pop-ups that go into yellow or red on the DirectX implementation. And it'll be a bit more apparent here as we pull up to a fairly busy area where a bunch of cluster munitions are going to go off. So, will Vulkan being added to DCS make a big difference? Even now at this setup that I'm doing, we're seeing a performance stabilization. I wouldn't call it an increase, but definitely a stabilization, which means less higher FPS, but more stable FPS all along. And if you're flying in VR, it'll probably make a pretty big difference. So I'll be testing that out. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. What would that mean? That would mean that you can have more units on the map, higher performance 
on the server and more scripts. But as you can see here already, the FPS seems to be way more stable under Vulkan. Now, why am I not saying this is a perfect example? Well, because the actual code of the game, the way it's written, it talks or it wants to talk to DirectX 11. And by doing this slip and replace and redirect, we are costing some of the performance. Also, I noticed that the smoke trails didn't quite look the same under the Vulcan. On Vulcan, they looked like different little puffs of smoke. It's hard to describe, but in one case, they look like streaks, and the other one, they look like puffs. And this is because each one of these API engines draws things possibly a little bit differently. And in this case, the smoke was very apparent. Otherwise, as we pull up here to the end of the flight, overall, about 10%, a bit, about 10 FPS lower on Vulcan. So that's that's probably our 5 to 10% difference that we're talking about the translation engine. But it appears to be way more stable. I'll let you guys decide. Leave me a comment. Let me know if I'm uh, misreading this. The stats are on the screen. But I'll catch you in the next video, and uh, I'll do a server and a VR test next. For now, it's been Plasma1945, and as we're looking at these A-10s, and the airplanes on the ground, we can definitely see the Vulcan stuff stuttering a bit more as we quickly switch between objects. But maybe it's a little bit more stable. As always, hopefully you've enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you guys in the air next time. Plasma's out of here.